know you're crazy, but I only wanna be with you You think I'm shady, cause I'm out here trying to make some moves But it ain't like that, just know that I'll be right back I'll give you all my time, just to let you know you're mine It ain't nothing, promise I'ma do it all to give you something This love I got is only for you, you're my comfort My future husband, I'ma give you all my Hit that throttle, it's time to blast off to another place When I'm having problems, the alcohol songs I'm made, disappear, taste my taste Licking my cup, I love it too much Alcohol, it fuck saving face One is my wife, all is my bitch When we have a threesome, I get shit face So give me that love, give me that buzz Something about the feeling I can't shake It burns my soul, I'm out of control But always going back, need AA I live in a crowd when I come down But it's hard when you're there every damn day I drink when I wanna drink And I don't give a fuck what so what people say Oh All right, people, welcome to Happy Hour with Lido. Uh, I am your host. My special guest today is, you know what I mean, the former lead singer of the group Brother. Um, he's also done some work, uh, Saved by the Veil. You might have seen him in that. Um, also, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, oh, and American that. <laughs> For sure, my guy, Anthony Harrell. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. I'm listen, man. You don't know how much this means to me that you was able to come on here, bro. Seriously. <laughs> hey, the feeling is the same, man. Like I don't do a lot of interviews because people don't ask. So whenever somebody asks and they're and you were genuinely like I could tell you were genuine, you really wanted to do it and you knew about me and my story. So it's it's you know, it's a blessing just for you to ask to be a part of this. For sure, man. I appreciate it. Um I like to start off every conversation, man, the same, you know what I mean, as far as, you know, me being, you know, um, I'm an advocate for mental health, you know what I'm saying? 
um, mm-hmm. with everything that we've been going through with the pandemic and everything. Um, how have you been holding up? I have actually been using this time um, to, it's funny that you mentioned mental health it's, uh, because I experienced uh, a, a real drop in my mental health uh, a couple of years ago uh, to the point where, you know, I was probably damn near psychotic, man, not even joking. Um, uh, uh, and so I used the time of the pandemic. It came at a perfect time for me personally, because um, I needed that time to clear my my mind of, uh, or my body of any, you know, any drugs, um, not including weed, any liquor and uh, get my mind right and work on my mental health. And so that's all I've been doing. Word, that's what's up. Yeah, I know it's been yeah. tough for a lot of people, man. Um, we just got some crazy news today, man. Rest in peace, DMX, man. X, man, that's what I meant to say when we first started this interview, man. I love crazy. DMX so much, man. That brother's his energy. Rest in peace. And, um, you know, God bless his family right now, the Simmons family. Yeah, facts, man. That's a, that's a tough one, to sm- to, a tough pill to swallow today, man. It, um, it, you know, how much he meant to the culture and everything, bro. It's That's, that's tough. They say the good die young, man. That's the true statement. Cause fifty, as a black man, it's was way too young. But his energy, man, it's it's. I just posted a video when I heard about it um, about an hour or so ago, and I was with my dogs um, outside my front yard, and um, his energy, man, is that's the thing that's gonna live forever. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact, bro. Yeah. So for you know people who may not know much about you, you know what I mean? Talk about um, a little bit of your story you know what I mean, from your childhood living in L.A. up to the point where you and your brothers are just about to sign with Island Def Jam. All right. Um, can you give me an, a roundabout time? How, m- how much you want so, me to So, that? Yeah, so, like, um, well, let's start with, like, your love for music. Like, when did y'all really start singing? Okay, so, um, well, we've been singing our whole lives. Um, my dad put it in us. My dad had been singing. His His mom was my grandma was a singer. So we kind of all just have it in us. Um, however, we got together, uh, man, I'm really bad at dates. So you're going to have to forgive me. Um, but we got together as a group, probably around 2000. We were calling our fives, the 05 Jackson five and 05. So okay. years before that, probably. And then, um, uh, we probably got signed to Def Jam a few years later. So I'm, I'm thinking 07, mm-hmm. um, we kind of just all came together uh, age wise and energy wise and creative wise. And it just made sense. Um, and everything else was history from there, man. Our uncle Drano um, came in, start managing us and we went on to do some amazing things, man. I mean, obviously you're, it touched you enough to want to interview yeah. me. Facts. <laughs> we did something. <laughs> Drano, Drano didn't play no games, man. <laughs> man, not at all. Man. He's a tough guy. <laughs> he is. He, he's a tough guy, man, but, you know, I was able to get past that outer exterior, you know, kind of tough guy thing. And on the on the inside, man, that dude, I I, I looked up to him. He's always been my fam- favorite uncle and I always will, man. He's a loving guy. Yeah, he's I can tough, tell. Tough I can tell he loves you. Yeah, he was giving y'all tough love. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what, you know, that's what black men, we need more mentors like that. You know what I'm saying? We, we do. Don't, these kids, man, <laughs> these kids are 17, 18, bro, they ready to Boy, I got two sons and I'm preparing myself right now, my mental health, so I will whoop that ass when they turn teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put your hands on these kids nowadays, man. DCS, PPS, CCP, what right. they call it, child services at your crib, man. So yeah. you got to find a way to discipline them. Yeah, you're right, man. Because <clears throat> yeah. a lot of these kids nowadays, bro, they don't care, bro. Seriously, Crazy. man. It's kind of scary, yeah. So like we were saying before, you know, you um, were part of my one of my favorite R&B groups. You know what I'm saying? Y'all like talent wise. I put y'all up there with the Joe the the Drew Hills, Jagged Edge. You know, that means. A- yeah. Um, talk about the process of actually doing that kind of reality TV show where they just put all you, you know what I mean? Like put y'all out there in front of the camera. And you know what I mean? I knew that was, you know, tough for y'all. Yeah, um, I'm still to this day um, feeling the after effects um, of what that reality show did. And, um, you know, it's really hard to talk about hard to because it's hard to explain. But there's there was so many benefits for myself 
uh, for that show coming out and, and for everything that they did and for allowing myself to see myself and ourselves. There's so many benefits that stem from it, man. And uh, I try to hold on to more beneficial stuff as opposed to the bad stuff. I looked at the bad stuff and I try to better myself, obviously. But it, overall, man, the experience, it was one of the probably one of the most craziest, most amazing experiences of my whole life. And it will always will be. Word. Um, so in 2008, y'all dropped the, the album, brother, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Which I still listen to that today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because to me, man, like music ain't the way it used to be. R&B music is not the same. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's so, I don't know, bro. Like I really don't listen to much, you know, much uh, new music at all. Huh? You know, Cause I just, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I love the old school feel of music. Um, mm -hmm. old R&B music. I love that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and you name like one or two R&B cats nowadays that you like mess with. I'm not talking um, about like, they don't have to be young, but just R&B. Two, oh, okay. two R uh, Trey, Trey okay. songs for sure. Um, uh, I'm a huge Neo fan. Um, but then again, you know, they still, you know, they're, they're not really the newer, newer guys. Oh, um, yeah. Imani. Imani. Yeah, I mess with Imani. That's the homie. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, as far I, as Imani, I gotta look him up. I ain't never like listen to his stuff. Yeah, yeah, Imani, uh, Joe Button's friend. You know what I'm saying? Um, he actually he be out there in Cali too. He was on uh, the hook of I don't know if you've heard "Kisses Kisses in the Sky" with Jada Kiss and uh, Rick Ross. I gotta go back and hear it. Yeah, yeah. he's on that. Yeah, he's talented, man. For gotcha. sure. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much, like, and then, you know, um, so, you know, what, can, can you go into kind of, like, the experience of creating that album? Yeah, uh, and that's a, uh, another thing. The experience in the process is one of the things that I, 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 the main things I took from the whole experience of brother and music, and, but, yeah, man, the process is, uh, I, uh, tend to I love the process the most uh more than anything else I love being in the studio I love recording um even the the cameras in your face was really weird man that was it was kind of like they were they were at our house um for 12 hours a day for six weeks stuff so that was like in like cameras in your face all the time no matter what that was really strange for me so I'm I'm kind of glad we didn't do a second season of the show because and I think God knew you know we weren't too prepared to continue that lifestyle on that's why it all kind of crumbled uh so that's a positive thing you know I, I look at our breakup I don't look at it as a negative thing you know because we could always sing again and we're still alive we have our health uh and so but the process man is it's it's amazing it's amazing man I, I hope one day to get back to doing that with my brothers hopefully one day man yeah um I know firsthand you know what I mean how how hard it is to do business with family you know what Man. I'm saying? Oh. Um, especially, you know, family like myself, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, coming from somewhere where you never really had much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so um, I know in 2011 the vacancy album was supposed to come, you know what I'm saying? Man. We was waiting on that. Um, and it never came to fruition, you know what I'm saying? The public really, like, you know, people just came out and was just like, Oh, y'all broke up, but they didn't really tell us. You know what I'm saying? They they basically said, you know, um, you decided to go solo along with Grady um, and um, Jake and Papa wanted to be together. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's, your, what's your other brother name? Um, JR. JR. Yeah, yeah, Jared. So is that really what happened? Y'all just decided to just go your separate ways or can't or can you even talk no. about that? No, I can talk about anything that I want, man, but I have to be careful because I got to I got to. I'm, I'm at a point right now in my life where I'm finally content, happy, uh, and it's and uh, not only that, I w I don't want. I have a perspective, and I have to realize that no matter what I'm telling you, it's going to be my perspective, and so I have to sweep my words with 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 graciousness and 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 with just make sure I'm I'm gracious. So with that being said, um, my perspective, uh, first of all. I'll tell you what never happened. Uh, I never left the group and wanted to go solo. So whoever's telling you that just doesn't, you know, they, they don't want to get to the true truth of it. 
That's absolutely false. I could have took solo deals my whole life. I never did. I turned down solo deals from, I'm talking about some big name people just so I could sing with my brothers. So let's just dead that. Um, but you know what it was, man? Um, I, I, I left um, uh, an unhealthy situation. And by leaving, I mean, like, I took my feet out and left and I went somewhere else. Like, no, I'm about to die in this situation. My mental health is going to, is getting the best of me. I have to walk away from this. When I walked away, I got on the phone immediately with my brother Grady and I said, hey, let's talk. All the brothers sit down at a table. Let's talk about our future, what needs to be done. I'm just telling you facts. Um, my brother Grady called all of my other brothers, J uh, JR, Jake and Pop, and tried to get them on the phone. I was at a friend's house with my, who's now my wife. We were sleeping on his little cot. It was the ones that they sleep in jail was probably bigger than the cot I was sleeping on at the time with my wife and my daughter at the time. So this day I, I get my brother on the phone. I'm like, call Jake and Pop. JR, we got to all talk and let's see what we need to do because I can't go on like this. So he gets on the phone. Long story short, man, he says they don't want to sit down and talk, bro. This was over 10 years ago. They don't want to talk. I'm like, what? Yeah, they want to just go on and do their own thing. So at that point, man, I'm like, I, I, I was, I didn't have no money. I, I barely had control of my own thoughts. Uh, I, I, but I knew I, I had found my, my, who's now my wife, Kathy, you know, at that point, man, I could have fought, you know, to, I could have called and be like, yo, what's up, man? What's up? But at that point, man, I, 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 I was, I was just having next to me. I'm like, you want to just, we'll just forget about this. And that day, and kind of never look back. You know what I mean? It's just like they, they, and I made several attempts after that uh, to, to be like, yo, man, can we, and they, it was all shot down. Like, no, we don't want to do that. And to this day, I haven't sat in a room with them. Like I'm talking to you now, not even on the phone with my own brothers, the three that I named and say, what, what's up, man? Well, why do you think I want to leave? What's going on to this day? And it might not ever happen. It's not because of me. I want to do so I have to assume that it's because they don't want to talk about it. So other than that, man, you could assume what you want. Everybody else could assume what they want. It'll all just be assumptions on their part because they don't want to come out and speak about it. So and I, now I'm officially solo. I get the point. They don't ever want to, the brother to get back together for whatever reason they need to. You know, you need to ask them, man. Yeah. I and, I, and I reached out to um, I reached out to Grady. He hadn't mm -hmm. said anything to me yet. Um about you know just being on the pod um jake and papa um they have like an email or something that you know they have everything sent to but nobody's got back to me you the only one that really like was like yeah let's go yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's weird to me man is um what do i call you just Kev, you call Kev? me kevin yeah that's, that's fine yeah so what's weird to me man and and i'll open up about this stuff now because it, i think it's time um is you know, when you mentioned it's hard to work bi business and family, you know, if emotionally, man, uh, I think us as black men, and, th and this is what I'm learning as a father, man, because I'm having kids. I just had a baby girl. It's my fourth kid. Congratulations, and bro. Thank you so much, man. Her name's Sunrise. Absolutely amazing. Um, and um, I'm learning to get my emotions together because my sons are watching me, man. And my, I have one son that's really sweet. Uh, no matter what, he's always smiling. You can't get mad no matter what. And the other one is just like me. He's temp he has a temper. He's temperamental. And so they watch everything I do. And I'm like, I have to get my emotions in check. And, you know, with my brothers, uh, and with family, you know, I, it's, it's just like, we. and by the way, we went through so much, man. We went through so much together, at, but even before we had a deal. So to get in, you know, to get in business with my family is a rough thing, but if we get, if people could get their emotions together, uh, I think anything can be done, but nothing can be done without a conversation. Nothing. If somebody just wants to not talk about something, there, nothing can get accomplished without a conversation. No matter how painful it is, you have to talk about stuff. If you don't want to talk about it, will never be any, if, and that could be cool too. Maybe it's just, that's it. But my, my thing is they want to forget that it happened. How do you forget that, that was like the best time of my life, man. We did, we sang for Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, we, Brian McKnight. We, we fulfilled so many of our dreams. So dance why? for a new edition, the new edition. That new edition. That's like top five all time for me. So why, just because the breakup was so bad and I know it hurts, why forget all the other great shit that we did? 
by not wanting to talk about it. That's crazy to me, man. But to each his own. I'll never forget. Listen, y'all got a hell of a story, bro, because I just looked at it like, man, if y'all would have stayed together, bro, the history that's there, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, what's that song that you that that you used to come out and sing? He's my brother and I love him. Yeah, I love that song. Bro. Winans, man. We got it from the Winans and we took it and ran with it. Love that song, bro, because you could just feel it. You know what I'm saying? Like when when you were coming out and all of them people were looking at y'all, you know what I'm saying? When y'all came out, bro, I was like, man, these dudes. <laughs> hey, you know what's the trip, Kev? Look, man, I'm going to tell you this. And I mean, I hate to be this this dark about it because family can be successful in the business. Don't get it twisted. But uh, it sucks because, um, man, it's, it's emotional to talk about. Um, um, I don't know. Oh, no, I don't want to get too crazy, man. Bro, this check. is a free, this platform is, you know what I'm saying? However you feel, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, like you said, you want to be respectful to your, you know, to your family and stuff like that. Um, But, mm -hmm. you know, this ain't one of them where you got to be politically correct. You feel me? You can right. say however you feel, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I just got to make sure I'm, I'm I'm loving, man, because, uh, you know, I, I, I think um uh, things get lost in translation, man. The devil... The way he works, man, in this business, that's what I was going to say. Um, the business, man, we came in singing, he's my brother and I love him like myself, right? And 100% meant it. Rubbing all each other's faces, hugging each other. Would do anything for each other. And got in the business, my brother, and it ate us alive. It ate us alive. I mean, th that's a fact. It ate us up so much. And my uncle is our uncle. That's our blood uncle. But we couldn't even get it right we couldn't we're, we weren't strong enough mentally spiritually whatever you want to call it to get the shit right and keep it together but that it's not over we could we could if we wanted to still get it back if everybody humbled themselves came together now that we have uh we're all uh more intelligent smarter uh more in touch with god i follow my brother jacob he's always he's doing his karate thing not karate Wing Chun, whatever it is, super in, a spiritual person. I mean, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to sit in a room and conduct business with one another. It's just, there's no reason. That's, that's my piece. I, I agree, man. Um, that man, when, when, like, I'm, when y'all broke up, bro, that hurt me. <laughs> you know darkest what I'm saying? Life, man. Darkest time. So Absolutely. When is the last time that you record, that y'all recorded a song together? And like like I said, that day that I told you about where I I, I, I literally was just like, but I, you know, I, I recorded stuff with my brother JR um, because uh, he, you know, he raps, he does his rapping thing and he got down on a couple of songs with me. So there was no hard feelings there or whatever. But I reached out to Jake and Pop when it, you know, when they start doing their thing and I offered them beats. They didn't want them. Um, I mean, they just absolutely every flag up that they don't want to collaborate or do any kind of music. So I'm cool with that. I haven't done anything at all. I'm just doing my own thing now. Mm. Yep. You know, what's crazy. Like, you know, as, and, and another thing too, as black men too, like together, you can create a fist. <laughs> I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But just one person, two people, bro. Like, I understand, you know, I get the whole message where, like, I live in Dayton, Ohio. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you've ever been here. But yep. we, have, we have a lot of talent, talented people that here that can do, sing, rap, everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because everyone is, you know, it's a small town, probably like 200,000 people, if that, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. instead of everyone wanting to come together and get somebody in the industry, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. everyone, everyone is in competition. So, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, oh, I got to be better than him. Oh, I got to be better than you. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just coming, collabing, creating something special and watching it just blossom. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that doesn't happen here. You know what I mean? Like, they call our city, like, hating Dayton. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, mm -hmm. that's what people do. Like, the moment you do anything positive, somebody going to try to kick you down. You know? Yep. And I've never been that way, man. I, I, I've saw it my whole life and I've, I've saw people be like that, especially our, our, our black folks, man, are just like that. When they get in a position of power, it's like they're scared. 
even a little power, giving a little something. They're scared to help their, you know, other brothers uh, who might do this exact same thing as them because they're scared. They're going to their position is going to get took when they ain't even looking at the big picture. It's just like now that I'm by myself, man, I live in Barstow, by the way, Barstow, California. Ain't nothing popping out here. But, you know, I promised that if I, I promised God and myself that if if and when he ever put me in a position where I could create my own situation and do my own thing, I'm, it's going to spread out and I'm going to spread my wings and my 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 talent out and help other people. So I'm, I built a studio. With that being said, I built me and my wife built a studio here in Barstow. This is it right here. And I'm just I'm at the top of my production game that I've ever been. And my plan is to build many several studios out here in Barstow and just start create a program where I can start helping the kids because uh, where they could go do stuff out here, studios, dance, um, uh, rehearsal halls where they could go dance, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So uh, artist, artist development, artist development, starting with the kids, man. Yep. Because they don't have that no more either. Anywhere. I know, man. It's sad. It's crazy sad, man. Ain't man. That's 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 so crazy, man. Um, is this heard... a uh, is this a marijuana friendly show? Go ahead, yeah, for sure, All right, <laughs> for sure. All um, right. So I've heard um, Jake and Papa's music, and it, their music is phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, man, you know what I mean? Like, I think what made me. Or if I was in a group, right? If I was in a if I was in a singing group, seeing the the new edition story would make me want to change some things. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying, uh, uh -huh. you know how big new edition could have been. Like they were already larger than life, but what could they? If they would have just stayed together and everything would have been able to to work, like even today they have problems. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you know, like you know. Um, last I heard, Johnny Gill and Ralph Tresvant own the name. And mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you know what I'm saying. So then you got uh, BBD and and um, um, uh, Bobby Brown. Mm -hmm. Right now they got when they, if they tour or anything they can't use the new edition name. I heard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like so, um, I, I you know that's just that's just that's crazy to me. Like, um, who so. You're saying the last time that y'all have actually sung was that that long time ago, and y'all haven't even been in a room together since then. We've been in a room together, a couple of rooms, you know, maybe a funeral here, a room here, but never like not all five. It's just weird, man. I mean, weird. It's just weird, man. I don't understand why it has to be weird like this. It's like. You know, I, I I consider myself a real tough son of a bitch. Like I've been through some crazy stuff in my life. But one thing I can say about myself is I I, I know how to dust dust myself off and get up and just keep going without it affecting me. You know what I mean? And it seems to me that, you know, certain people, just certain people just don't know how to dust stuff off. And I don't even know what they got to dust off. Mm -hmm. A conversation, <laughs> like you said, a conversation. A conversation. Yeah. A conversation. And love and humility and all that stuff the Bible talks about. Yeah, communication is yeah. Um, the main the main reason why we fall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know the Bible also says pride pride comes before the fall. Fall, oh, yeah. I know that to be true over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I, you know I hope that y'all are able to one day, man. You know, just get together. I mean, I would think like even Grady can't get y'all together. He can't call him like y'all. Listen, come over here, man. Man, uh, man, it's 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 um, you know, ev everybody, and not only that. At this point, it's been ten years. Um, at this point, um, you know, the longer it goes on, obviously th they say the harder it is, and that's true because mm -hmm. now everybody has their own individual lives. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. you know, Pop had a baby. I think his baby's about to turn four. Jared, congratulations to Jr. He's he, his his wife of two years is now pregnant with his first child, um, and so you know people have their lives, and you know singing with brother m might be the last thing that they want to do now. So, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that that is that is okay. It's you know it's it's a shame. Like your fans will love that. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about it, man. 
Yeah. Your fans would definitely love that. So, okay, let's fast forward, right, today. All right. Let's talk about your, your your new journey that you're on right now with, with your music and, and and producing and things of that nature. What you got coming? Man, I um I have a project coming, but I'm I, I'm um I'm looking at the music business right now. Like I hate that I have to look at it like this, but like the market ain't good right now to drop an R and B album. So back to R and B. My album's gonna be R and B. Uh, the records I'm kind of dropping records here and there, singles here and there, just fun records, just to you know stay stay out there. But um, I'm not gonna drop this R and B record, which I feel like is pro probably gonna be the best material I've ever done because I'm working in the ultimate piece and I've never got a chance to work like this. Um, but I'm not gonna release it right now. For lack of a better term, it'd be like throwing my pearls to swine. Like you said, like the, I don't think people will really, really understand it like they should and give it, give it the love that they should. So it would kind of be a waste, but I'm waiting until the right time. There's gonna be a time where I'll be like, bop, it's now. And when that time comes, it could be any time. I'm gonna release it. Mm. I'm gonna re but in the meantime, you gotta hit I'm gonna me. Think. <laughs> you gotta what? hit me and let me know <laughs> when you're dropping it. No, no, no. I'm gonna let you know for sure. Like I'm gonna drop, I'm dropping a new single. I just dropped Chopper about two months ago, but I'm dropping a new single on May 31st, which is my birthday coming up in less than two months. And then after that, I'm gonna keep the R and B album just tucked until this time, but I'll let you know. Keep it in the tuck for sure. For yep. sure. And I was gonna get on that too. So um well let's let me ask you this. Who you listen to today? R and B wise, uh, I listen to a little bit of everything now that my sons. Um, I mean, my son Eli, he's like call him DJ Easy. He he like plays every single <laughs> thing. But to be specific, R and B wise, always Chris Chris Brown is like the top tier in my house all the time. Um, I love Tank. Mm -hmm. um, uh, R and B, R and B, R and B, R and B. It's it's tough. Yeah. It's tough, man. <laughs> old Tyrese. Oh, how old? <laughs> you know what? Um, I don't mean this, but damn. I like his last album that he did. Um, what was the last one called? Black Rose. I didn't get it. Was that the double CD? No, it was just uh, it was it was just him. He had that song Shame. You ever heard Shame? Oh, I like I love that song. Yeah, I don't remember the album though. Yeah, the album is nice. Um, yeah. Tank, he keep, you know, I like Tank because he keep us with something new at least once you know, a year. Mario, but I'm, uh, his last project was okay. He put out like an EP. I love his voice. What do you think yeah. of Mario? I, Mario was like, when he first came out, I, I like, I would listen to Mario all the time. And then uh -huh. I don't know if it was the songwriting because you're right, he has a great voice. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I don't think that they're getting him they're not doing him his justice as far as how he can go vocally. Yeah, I agree. So, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of the songs, I'm pretty sure he might want to do something different, but you know what I'm saying? I think that some of the songs that he do, it's just hard for me to get into them. What do you think of that new Silk Sonic, that Bruno Mars, Anderson Pack record? That's going to be fire. That when they, when they come with that album. Yeah. Yeah. That song, that song crazy. Yeah. That's all. I mess with both of them for sure. Me too. For sure, for sure. Um, so your single chopper. Yeah. Dope, dope single. You like for it? Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Dope single. I went and downloaded it on uh on Apple. Apple. Um okay. yeah. yeah, I went and downloaded it. Um, we're gonna be playing that on the audio portion of this. You know what I'm saying? All After right. our interview over, you know what I'm saying? I'll have that up for the fans can listen to that. But also yeah. go support that man and go buy it though. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. go give somebody some money <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <I> it. <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you indie right now? Or are you signed? Yeah, yeah, I'm indie. I mean, I, I'm gonna get whatever you get from putting your stuff on iTunes, which yeah. is nothing. Yeah, nothing. But yeah, I'm independent all the way. For sure. So, yeah. um, what was the imp inspiration behind writing that type of record? Man, uh, Juice World. Juice World, okay. Like it was um right around the time that he passed, uh, I, I started listening to him heavy, right? Because I already loved him, but 
I love the juice world, like the hip hop all the way freestyle and like, you know, that like him him on Wis uh, Tim Westwood and him like all them freestyles and stuff. And I was like, this dude is crazy. So um that part where he goes, I almost bought a protect, all the gets, motherfucker, fuck you. That's Juice World. He was on Westwood, and I think it was like 30 minutes in. Uh it was like a he was spinning all Eminem beats. And then 30 minutes in, he spent for like an hour straight, all freestyle. And then like that little one part came like 30 minutes in. And just that one little part, I was like, oh shit, on this TV, I was looking at, and at the time I had some drums up on my drum machine. And uh, I was like, that one little part, I just could create a whole entire song from that one part. And that's just what I did. So shout out to Juice World. That's all yeah. the energy creating and stem from him. Yeah, shout out Juice World for sure. Man, rest in peace for him too. So you say you're gearing up. Yeah, rest in peace, Juice World, for sure. God bless him. Yeah. Um, so you're gearing up, you're gonna drop something. It's gonna be you might mess around and drop it on a this at night, <laughs> midnight. I'll wake up one day feeling hella sleazy and be like, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. I want you to think about this a little bit, right? If you could go back and change or tell your younger self something, like um, about the music industry, what would you tell them? Probably something simple like document everything, videotape every single thing. If I had video footage of everything me and my brothers went through, I would be rich just off the video footage alone. So if, pr something that would get me rich, <laughs> whatever that is, but that's one thing. Or Cause y'all, you know, they had y'all like boot camp. Yeah, man. I mean, we look, and this is what I'll say too. I don't want to give up too much information because it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to show people that it's okay to tell, to tell people uh, like you have a couple of L's you took, but you can't show them too many kinks in the, in the armor. Cause they'll, they'll, you know, they'll try to infiltrate. But with that being said, when I start smoking, by the way, I forget. So uh, like real fast. So you got to remind me what, we to, what, what was I about to say? I forgot <laughs> that. Right. No, oh, so we were talking about like um, the industry and, you know, basically how it, it like the boot camp that y'all were doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I was about to say. Thank you. Yeah. Boot camp. One thing that we did, man, and I'll, I'll say I, but we all did do it, is we gave my uncle, I'm talking about car blanche as far as trust. Car, like, like we didn't question really anything. Yeah, we signed paperwork with him, but we didn't read it. We just was like, that's Unc. He told us what was in it. He told us what he was going to do. Told us how much he was going to take. And he did it. And it came, that thought, that alone, that is the reason. That was a mistake. And, and I'll say to this, to this day, man, I'm glad you said that because to this day, I will say it. I just realized we were in my room uh, when I lived in, uh, it's like Van Nuys, but it was really like Reseda. When my uncle brought the, he was about to get signed to Def Jam, he brought the paperwork to my room. He was like, y'all could get a lawyer. He suggested that we get a lawyer. And I was just like, I said, because, you know, I, I, that's my favorite uncle. And I, I, I always was his favorite uh, nephew. He called me his road dog. So he was like, he put me on his neck when he went to gamble and buy tickets. He used to let me pick his lottery number tickets. When I was like 11, 12, I was a skinny little dude. He loved me. So I trusted this dude. Like he was a gangster. I saw him beat, punch holes through walls. I was like, but he's a loving dude. Like, uh, and so I trusted him with all my heart. So I let my, I let my emotions back to that thing I told you about emotions. I let my emotions get in the way of my business sense. I should have had a business sense to, to be able to separate it. Like, okay, this is when I separate family and business. I didn't. So I take responsibility for that for myself, but my brothers did the same thing. They're, they're all, they all had to sign their individual names as well. We didn't sign, we signed as brother, but I signed my name, Anthony Harrell. And then when I, they were all in the room. And when I looked, I was like, I'm going to just, I'm going to just sign. Uncle, I don't need no lawyer. Just tell me what it is. I'll sign. And then he gave my other brothers, he looked at them and, and they was like, oh, we'll do it too. So they have to take responsibility for giving him a hundred percent trust as well. Cause they could have easily been like, I want to go get my own lawyer, which he said, y'all, y'all should do. So if I could go back to, that's another thing I would do is, 
separate family and business and say, okay, it's time. Give me the, the contract. I'm going to go look at it. And I didn't do that. I messed up. I didn't do that. Mm. Yeah. So I it, just, they say uh, <clears throat> everybody's first contract is always a terrible one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I knew it was going to be terrible. No matter if I got a lawyer or not, there, there was not much that, that would have changed. It, it, nothing. It was like, Def Jam, this is Def Jam. You, you want to sign a Def Jam, then it's going to be a slave deal. You already know what them deals are like. But on the flip side, you guys are going to get to fulfill all your dreams. You're going to get a TV show. You're going to get the album, a uh, debut album. And the, I was okay with all of that. I was okay with all of that. But then it started to get weird because, you know, the, the businessmen, the girls, the egos, the, the money, the possibility of being a millionaire, and all that stuff got to us. That's it. Nothing more than less. So do you, how much of vacancy did y'all get finished? The whole thing, man. It was finna, talk about R&B, it was finna bring that Joe to see energy back to the game, man. It was. It was. It was uh, R. Kelly, shout out to R. Kelly. We had, uh. Oh my mad scientist produced the whole thing with Ryan Toby. Um uh, I mean Oh man, it was gonna be one of them on, ones. It's, it's it, it was finna be out of here. Out of here. Mm. And then we 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 broke up, man. It was finna be out of here for real. Mm. Yep. That's, that you know what's crazy if y'all able to even come together, y'all could create like just like New Edition did, y'all could create a show. I don't you know see why not. Get paid off of this, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I believe the way New Edition did it too is when they they all wasn't they all weren't in the same room. So you know what I mean? Like one person would come and give their story, and then someone mm -hmm. else would come and give their story. And they just ended up putting it all together. And nobody knew, you know what I'm saying, each other's story until they watched the whole thing together. Mm. So they never knew how somebody may have felt. You know that's what I mean? Dope. Because of something like that's crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. but um, man, I hope I hope, man, that you know what I'm saying, at least y'all can just come come together and have a conversation, even if it's not about music, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, I know, like I said, you know, love and family from a distance, sometimes you gotta do that. Yeah, you know what I mean, for your own mental health. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, you know, I hope and pray that y'all are able to, you know, come to some sort of uh just you know. Just talking and you know, well we're let, I, I don't want to get it misconstrued i am cordial with them and 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 I, you know i'm cool with them like you know my brother jacob uh i just talked to him uh maybe like a month ago he released this little podcast interview so i called him so we're good on you know a human level <laughs> but as far as music nah yeah that's what's up man well listen i appreciate you coming on here giving you know what i mean your story anything else you want to you want to promote and I wish I had something to promote. Just my CD that's coming soon. Just, just please believe. I, I will tell you this. I'll take the time out to say this. I'm gonna pop off just a, a little bit, okay? Because I don't really get the chance to do interviews. I, 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 all the R&B and everything that I'm hearing on on um the radio and uh, everything I'm paying attention. Uh, I'm finna bring the dopest blend to R&B and hip hop that the world has ever heard in their life i'm talking about gut bucket dre beats to the dopest a nigga like me a nigga like me over watch and see watch and see that's all i'm about to say and that's coming soon it's all me till you see ain't nobody around so it's all me no doubt and if anybody want to get in contact uh, with you like nobody effing with it <laughs> oh yeah boise's music Bo boise's music b-o-i-z-e-e-s music and it, uh, only thing i got now is the instagram and i'm building from there just go to boise's music on instagram and follow me and then you'll get all the updates from there i got some stuff coming word and do you do you do uh like if anybody want to hit you up for like a hook or anything you know what man i used to do that uh i just cut that off literally six months ago because i work with probably hundreds of people my entire life and and I, I will do a hook. I will do a hook for the right person. But uh, as far as collaborating and producing for other people, I'm, I'm cutting that off for now. But I will do a hook for the right person, yes. Okay. Inter 
got to be right, but yeah, for sure. Energy got to be right, for sure. Just like everybody else, yeah. you can't yeah. be for just anything. It ain't always yeah. about money. <laughs> for sure. Yes. Even about money ever for me. Yeah. I ain't never made no money doing music. Isn't that the funny thing? <laughs> Not doing music. <laughs> for sure. Well, listen, yeah. y'all, this is this is Happy Hour with Lito. I got my guy, Anthony Harrell, on here. Um, you know what I'm saying? Y'all follow follow him, Boise's Music. I'm with IG. Music. And um, go pick up his single, Chopper, and another one coming. When you drop another one? May 31st. May 31st. All right. Y'all know what time it is. We out. Love y'all. Kev, love you, my brother. For sure. Love always, bro. I appreciate you. Yep.